Irene, Wendy, and Yaren are preparing breakfast. Zuyu, who is there, just sits at the dining table, snacking. Wendy gets annoyed at her. Hey, Zuyu, don't just sit there, help us quickly. No, I'm tired. She says flatly while continuing to snack. Hey, you, do you think we're not tired, huh? Fine, if you're tired, don't cook. Ugh, you make me angry. If you don't want to help, go away. Don't eat what we cook. We won't share it with you. Come on, don't get upset because of this flirtatious girl. You both know her attitude. Hey, what did you say, flirtatious? Zuyu angrily stands up from her seat. Yes, you are a flirtatious and shameless girl. A liar, a relationship wrecker, attention seeker, disgusting. What? What did you say? Zuyu pulls Yaren's hair, and Yaren retaliates. Now, they are fighting. Irene and Wendy try to separate them. Yin, who has just finished showering, goes to the kitchen and sees the fight between Zuyu and Irene. Yin tries to separate Zuyu and Yaren by holding Zuyu's hand and trying to pull her away. You, a woman who likes to meddle. Zuyu says to Yaren in the middle of the fight, Better than you, you shameless and ungrateful girl, a relationship destroyer. The argument intensifies. Irene, Wendy, and Yin struggle to separate them, but the three of them are overwhelmed. The men who had been in the main room and heard the commotion, initially ignored it. However, as the commotion grows louder, they all quickly head towards the source of the noise. And when they arrive, Zuyu violently pushes Yin, and Yin can't hold her body. She is thrown, and her chest hits the edge of the dining table. Yin. JK shouts and rushes to Yin who is lying on the floor. He cradles Yin's head in his lap and Yin holds her chest. She can't inhale or exhale any air. Her face is wrinkled, clearly showing she is in pain. She squeezes her chest tightly, visibly trying to endure the pain. JK pats Yin's cheeks, but Yin only sheds tears. Since JK's shout calling Yin, the fight has already stopped. After about 45 seconds, Yin can't breathe at all. Finally, she can breathe normally again. Her hand holding her chest falls to her side as she feels weak. JK carries her to the main room, leaning her against the sofa. Irene immediately gives Yin a drink. How are you now? Is everything okay? JK asks Yin after Irene gives her a drink. Yin just nods slowly. This is because of you. Zuyu, we were the ones fighting. Why did you hurt Yin? You jerk. Why are you blaming me? Enough, all of you, be quiet. What actually happened? Wendy finally narrates the whole story. Hey, Zuyu, why did you do that? What do you mean? What did I do? Suddenly, can't you all stay quiet? And you, Zuyu, always causing trouble. If your goal is just to disturb the peace here, just leave right now. Everyone falls silent. It's the first time JK has expressed his emotions in front of his employees, shouting like that. This time, Yin looks at Zuyu with a mocking expression, even though she is secretly surprised to see JK shouting like that. Throughout her life, she has never seen JK shout so loudly. A smirk on Yin's face is now evident, and Zuyu realizes it. For this time, Yin feels victorious in front of Zuyu. Meanwhile, Zuyu is genuinely shocked by JK's outburst. Finally, that morning, their vacation is colored with tension and arguments. However, due to hunger, they end up eating peacefully and harmoniously. Zuyu? Yeah, she joins the meal, tuning out her hearing to all the criticisms she receives. Shamelessly, she eats eagerly without helping prepare breakfast. After breakfast, they plan to go sightseeing and buy souvenirs. Today will be filled with visits to various shops for souvenir shopping. In the evening, they held a barbecue party. They were now on the balcony of the villa overlooking the beach. They were busy grilling meat while joking and laughing, completing their activities. Oog, hot. Yin exclaimed as her hand accidentally touched the grill. JK, who was beside her, turned and held Yin's hand. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine, Opa. Must be hot, wait a moment. JK went back and brought a container of water. He then put her hand into the water. Yin could only stare at him. She didn't want to miss this moment, fearing that this might be the last time she could be close to him before everything changed. Is it cold now? Yin snapped out of her reverie. Ah, uh, yes, it is. Be careful. Zuyu, who saw the scene, felt annoyed. She clenched her fists. Now they were going to enjoy the food they had prepared earlier. A round dining table was available on the balcony. Yin sat to the left of JK, and we sat to the right of JK. Enjoy your meal. They started to eat. Yin struggled when cutting the meat because her hair, blown by the wind, kept getting in her eyes. She repeatedly tucked her hair, but it flew again and again. JK, who was next to Yin, smiled at her cute irritated face. Suddenly, JK stood up and went into the villa, then returned holding something in his hand. 
Unexpectedly, JK from behind tied her hair with a hairband. Yin was surprised. Before JK could tie it, Yin turned her body and looked at JK. Look ahead. It's hard to tie if you keep looking back. Yin turned her body back to the front. Uh, so sweet. I want that too. Come here, Nuna. I'll tie your hair using a chain. Hey, stupid. What do you think my hair is? How dare you? Irene said, throwing a salad at Minhyun. Minhyun just chuckled. Seems like you to have made up, huh? Why should they make up? Actually, they didn't fight. There was just someone who ruined this relationship. Yeren emphasized the last part of her sentence. Zuyu, hearing this, clenched her fists under the table and glanced briefly at Yeren. V nudged Yeren next to him and then glared at her. Enough. Can't we just have fun for now? Let's continue enjoying your meal. JK said, having finished tying Yin's hair, and returned to his seat. Now they continued to enjoy their food. This is really delicious. I'm satisfied with this food. Who is the chef? It's me, Chef V. Ugh. Where did you cook from? You didn't help at all. You even burned the meat. You just messed things up. Ha ha ha. Sorry. Turns out I'm a talentless chef. You've grown up, and as an adult, you can't even grill meat. Let it be. Besides, I'll never cook. Wait for Yeren, who will cook for me every day. Right. My dear? V teased Yeren while poking her chin. Oh, so sweet. You two are an ideal couple. Do you wish for that, Yin? Although you also have a dream partner, you just haven't realized it yet. What? Me? V glanced at JK, who was already glaring at him. Meanwhile, V just smiled widely, occasionally laughing. Disgusting. What? Zuyu. Did you say something earlier? No, nothing. Oh, I forgot, earlier I bought some soju. Let's party tonight, guys. Get ready. V said, then left and returned with several bottles of soju in a basket. Hoo-woo. We're having a party tonight, guys. Get ready. They each took a glass and poured soju into their glasses, except for JK and the two silent women. Hey, why aren't you taking glasses? Let's drink together. I'm allergic. As for me, Yin won't drink. Aish, boss, come on, let your sister drink. She seems to want to. No. Haishish, Yin, do you want to drink? Not allowed. Aish, I'm asking him, boss, not you. Answer. Yin, do you want to drink? No, I don't want to. Why? Are you afraid of being scolded by your brother? No, I've been drunk before, and the next morning I had a headache. I don't want to experience that again. JK, hearing Yin's answer, finally smiled faintly. That night, everyone got drunk except JK, Yin, and Zuyu. It's Sunday, the last day of their vacation, and tomorrow morning they have to return to Seoul. Now, everyone has gathered in the main room. They will spend the day outside today, starting with breakfast at a restaurant, visiting other tourist spots they haven't seen yesterday, taking photos, playing, having lunch at an open-air beachside restaurant, and finally, they will all board a yacht. After lunch, all employees gather at one point. They are going to board a yacht to enjoy the ocean view. Now they have boarded a large yacht with many other visitors, who are none other than employees from Jian Corp from various divisions. After two days of having individual free activities, this last day is a collective event for all employees to gather together and enjoy the sea view. 30 minutes pass. Now, they are in the middle of the sea. Everyone is enjoying the beauty of the ocean. The wind gently sweeps through their hair. Without stopping, they continue to find good positions for photos. All faces look smiling and happy. Except, Zuyu. Zuyu has been clenching her fists since she saw the closeness between Yin and JK. They sit side by side. One of JK's arms continuously embraces Yin, who is sitting next to him. Occasionally, his hand tidies up her hair, tousled by the sea breeze. JK's face looks happy, savoring every moment they go through. As does Yin. All the employees there can see that they look more like a couple than a brother and sister. On their right, V and Yeren, a couple, are sitting, and on their left, Wendy, Irene, Daniel, and other team members are seated. They gather, occasionally taking group photos, joking, and laughing happily. Suddenly, hum, oh pa, oh nee, I need to use the restroom. Ah, uh, all right, do you want me to accompany you? No need, oh nee, Yin says, and goes to the toilet alone. Zuyu, who observes this, has a plan in her mind. She quietly follows her. 15 minutes have passed, and Yin has not returned from the toilet yet. Suddenly, Kai, an employee from another team division, comes running towards JK, his face looking panicked and pale. Mr. Jian. JK, V, and the others immediately focus their attention on Kai who looks panicked. What's wrong Kai? Mr. Jian, Miss Yin, she, what happened? Spit it out. 
Miss Yin, she's drowning in the sea, Miss Zuyu just pushed her. What? Mr. Jian, she's over there, but she's not visible anymore. Kai points in a direction. Without hesitation, JK, V. Daniel, and all the men in their team immediately plunge into the water to rescue Yin. They quickly swim to search for her. Meanwhile, Kai immediately orders the yacht to stop moving. Shortly after, the yacht comes to a halt. Everyone on board panics witnessing the situation. They gather to observe what's happening. Yarin, Irene, Wendy can't stop crying. The other male employees also join in diving to help find Yin, who is still submerged and unseen. 